It's a great piece of conservative review by our buddy Daniel Horowitz. In just 17 months, illegal alien family units increased by 960% at the border. 960%. There are a lot more than roughly 14,000 people seeking to invade our border, he writes. The American people are rightfully concerned about the brazen caravan, quote-unquote, of invaders headed for our southern border and fully expect that it will be stopped at all costs before it reaches our border, not in our courtrooms. However, we must not lose sight of the likely 800,000 strong quiet invasion at a less public level that is crossing our border this year. Brand new data from Customs and Border Protection should mobilize Trump and Republicans to not just focus on the caravan, but on finally stopping the broader invasion in its entirety. According to Customs and Border Protection, that's CBP, roughly 400,000 illegals were caught sneaking in between our points of entry in fiscal year 2018, and it's not even over. Another roughly 125,000 presenting themselves at the port of entry in FY 2018, were deemed inadmissible. The fact that the overall numbers increased by 106,000 from FY 2017 is enough of a concern, but several other data points are even more concerning. The trajectory and the nature of the border crossings are what should really worry us. First, it's important to remember that border agents will tell you that the U.S. typically apprehends Only about 50% of those who illegally cross the border. That means that there were likely close to 800,000 people who crossed the border last year, not at our points of entry. Now, as such, it's not just the several hundred thousand illegals that were released into our population after being apprehended that should concern those who care about their communities and schools. What's more concerning are the people we never apprehend, who most likely are more dangerous than the ones we did apprehend. As Brandon Judd, president of the Border Patrol Council, explained uh, several months ago to Horowitz, the criminal cartels are pushing them, that is these family units, in front as the sacrificial lambs, forcing me to use my resources to take them into custody so that they can then cross the dangerous criminals right behind them. And we play into their hands by continuing to humanize the way things are happening on the border. It's more than humanized. We romanticize it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, just from a drug crisis standpoint, the hundreds of thousands of undetected illegals coming in every year, thanks to the fake sympathy over families, is terrifying. As the L.A. Times wrote in a recent report, quote, Chinese companies send fentanyl in small quantities to dealers in the United States or Canada, but ship the drugs in bulk to criminal cartels in Mexico. Well, then what happens? The cartels then mix the synthetics into heroin and other substances or press them in the counterfeit pills. The product is then smuggled across the border. So you have the Chinese government working with Mexican cartels. The president is signing a series of opioid bills today, all of which fail to recognize this premise as the main cause of the 72,000 annual deaths. The next data point, That should concern us is the trajectory of the increase, which is unfathomable. While the overall numbers aren't higher than they were during Obama, that is because the numbers dropped to a a once-in-a-generation low during the first few months of Trump's presidency, just based on the perception that he'd enforce our sovereignty. Since illegals saw that nothing changed, the numbers surged beyond belief, and the president has been trying over and over again. He's been telling us he wants to make changes, but the Democrats in Congress are blocking him. And so are some Republicans, by the way. A total of 16,658 family units, these are f- nuclear families, were caught between the points of entry in September. A new record and a sharp spike from the previous months. In total, 161,113 family units were apprehended this year. Remember, only 1.4% of the family units apprehended last year were deported. So almost all of them remain in our communities, along with the nearly half a million others who were never apprehended. And this is growing every year. So now we've gotten to almost 700,000. 
and it goes on. This is an incredibly serious matter, of course. National sovereignty, the rule of law, uh, the nature of our immigration system, it's being openly and brazenly violated, and not just by aliens, by people in our own country. By people in our own country. Now, we spent a lot of time last night, it's been picked up by a lot of news outlets, uh, conservative news outlets since today, as we have in the past on this issue, pointing out the hypocrisy of the Democrats. Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, Bernie Sanders, Chuck Schumer, and many others. Harry Reid, the positions that they took 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 25 years ago, the positions that they took on illegal immigration. First of all, they called them illegal immigrants. As recently as 2009, 2010, Chuck Schumer called them illegal immigrants. As a matter of fact, he admonished his audience in 2009. He said, look, if you don't use the word illegal, then you lose essentially the moral high ground. What is this undocumented stuff, he said. Now, of course, he's reversed course because they're all about power and politics, not about country. So what's the point? The point is the Democrat Party is not even the Democrat Party of 10 years ago. It's certainly not the Democrat Party of 20 years ago. Its position on immigration, like its position on economics, like its position on the military, like its position on health care, embraces increasingly radical policies and attitudes. And it's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse. If the media really want to understand a division in this country, they need only look at themselves and look at the course the Democrat Party has taken. You have a party where John Kennedy couldn't be nominated for the presidency today. You have a party where Bill Clinton couldn't be nominated for the presidency today. You have a party that wouldn't nominate Harry Truman for the presidency today. And I could go down the list. And so now... You have individuals who want to out-radical each other. Tell me, who is a centrist in the Democrat leadership? Or a so-called moderate? Can you name one? Just name one. Well, I can't name any. I don't see them. Do you? All right. By the way, we have a wonderful guest.